Official newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Henry Plummer, duly elected sheriff of Bannock, Montana in 1863, organized one of the most desperate and widespread criminal organizations in the history of the Northwest. And in closing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for electing me sheriff. And I promise you, Nay, I solemnly vow here and now never to betray the trust that you've placed in me. Now, so as not to waste any more of your precious time or one more nickel of your hard-earned tax money, I here and now appoint my deputies. Money, boys. <laughs> you can be sure just as long as you want to. Real successful day, right? <laughs> yeah, you boys did a wonderful job. You and all the others who couldn't be with us tonight. I want each of you to take one of those badges. You know, I was so sure of this election, I ordered those badges before the votes were even in. How do you like that? Well, I always did say, Henry, when it comes to politics, you're a genius. That sure beats me how you do it. Organization is how I do it. Nothing more or less. Boys, I've got the whole state covered. The whole state. How do you like that? Well, it's not that I doubt you, Henry, but just how are all of us going to keep from shooting our friends? You know, somebody in the gang we don't know. Very simple. You take your neckerchiefs, and you tie it in a sailor's square knot, all of you, just like this, the same way. You see? Now, we use other markings much the same way. We mark pay wagons, stagecoaches, banks, and mines. Now, this system of ours is foolproof if we observe our own ground rules. There's a job I have in my mind that demands immediate attention. I happened to hear about the strike at the Lucky Mine the other day. You're acquainted with it, aren't you? Sure. Mm -hmm. Two guys that dug it are the luckiest cusses I ever met. Well, you won't be saying that about them day after tomorrow. The partners' names are Jamie Manning and Joe Anderson. Now listen. Here's what we're going to do tomorrow. He's on our way here. Good. Things are working out just about right, aren't they? Come in, Mrs. Manning. Sheriff Plummer, you can't do it. You just can't do it. My Jamie didn't kill his partner. You've got to save him. He didn't do it. I swear it. I'm sorry, Mrs. Manning, but your husband killed his partner out of greed. It was proved. A fair trial. You call that a fair trial? You call that mob a jury? Take a look at my husband's gun. He told you to take a look at it. It hasn't even been fired. Ned, where is Mr. Manning's gun? Where'd you put it? There on the top door of your desk. It'd be hard to believe, Mrs. Manning, but three shots were fired from this gun. They're the same caliber bullet that was found in the body. Can't be. Jamie. Oh, there, there, there. Oh. Things aren't as bad as they seem to be. Pretty eyes will get all red and swollen weeping like that. You say that as if there was some hope, Mr. Plummer. There's always hope, Mrs. Manning. Well.
I'll murder you. You promised me. You told me you would not die. This woman's hysterical. She doesn't know what she's saying. Yeah. You have to come inside, Mrs. Manning. Please. Oh. Oh. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. My assignment was to find out who was responsible for the wholesale murders and stage and train holdups which had occurred in the past three months. I was heading for Bannock, Montana. You run this relay station, mister? Yeah. Stage going to Bannock? Sure does. How far is it? Well, you'll be there in time for dinner. Yeah. How much is the fare? Get your ticket from the driver. You can pay at the other end. Oh. Here, give me your stuff and I'll stow it for you. Find a board, we'll pull out soon. All men in this town. Ned, take care of it. You boys keep the driver busy. I'll take care of the man in the coach. Adams, another railroad operative, had been placed in the stage office to get day-by-day -day information on shipments or anything else of interest. What happened? Hold up. Another man murdered. I'll get the man who did this or turn in my badge. There's his credentials. Are you on the coach with him? That's right. You plan to stay in town long? Well, I plan on doing a little hard rock mining in these parts. Good. When I catch his murderer, I'll need you for a witness. All right. What's your name? Matt Smith. When you find out where you're staying, let me know, will you? Be glad to, Sheriff. That all? Yeah. That's all. Another lawman, Sheriff? Yeah. Looks like it. His credentials seem to show he is. Looks like we got a boy for a sheriff instead of a man. What we need is fighting men, not a bunch of politicians. 
Think you could do any better? I'm sure I could. Why don't you try? Maybe I will. It's all right, Matt. Nobody's here. Made any progress? A little. Let's have it. The robbers seem to know every time a stage goes out of here with gold on it. An inside leak? No, I'm positive. It's uncanny. I've checked telegrams, people coming and going, but nobody comes under suspicion. A little progress is right. I did get some information, though. I went to a quilting party the other day with the good ladies, and they're all excited about a vigilante committee forming. People are getting fed up, huh? That's putting it mildly. Might be a good outfit to tie in with. You know who's behind it? Yes, a man by the name of Captain Williams, one of our leading citizens in town. Oh. I'll see you later, Frankie. No, but this is important. A miner by the name of Hendricks just left town on the stage with $30,000. Well, this is a mining town. They're leaving every day. Yeah, I know, but he was drunk and he told half the town. This is a matter for the sheriff. Come on. Well, to be perfectly honest with you two, I just can't see any reason for this concern. If they'll hold up a stage that's a shooter, man, they'll certainly hold it up to take $30,000. As a resident of this town, I demand protection for a fellow citizen. All right. All right, if it'll please you, I'll take a couple of the boys and ride out. Much obliged. It's gratifying to know that we have such public-spirited citizens. I shan't forget this. Let's go, Frankie. He didn't seem any too anxious, did he? Yeah, no wonder this is a criminal's paradise. Don't you think we'd better do that riding ourselves? Yeah. You lock up the stage office. I'll go to the livery stable and get our horses. Be too far off. You're too late, Sheriff. I'm sorry about this. We got here as quick as we could. You're not too late to catch a killer, so. Couldn't be more than 15 minutes away. Horse tracks lead off in that direction. We'll stay here with the bodies. All right, let's pick up the tracks and ride. Matt, take a look at this. These are fresh. This company doesn't use any chalk markings. I wonder if it means anything. Well, I don't know. It might. I wonder what he's got in his hand. It's his handkerchief. He must have tied it that way before he got killed. That's a sailor's knot. Yeah. Some of the men in town tie their neckerchiefs with a sailor's knot. Two plumber's deputies had theirs tied that way. Did you notice? No. Could be this man was trying to tell us something. Must be, when they've gone to all this trouble. Well, oh, Frankie, I wonder what would happen if I'd tie my neckerchief in a sailor's knot.
Mister? Hiya. You're kind of lonesome. Mind if we join you? No, I'll sit right down. You fellas been in town long? In and out. You? Same. Office getting bigger all the time. Meet the head manor yet? No, who is he? You'd be surprised. No offense, mister. But the least you know about others in the outfit, the safer we all are. You understand. I understand that you two men are going to have to answer to a lot of questions. What do you mean? By who? Vigilantes. about that? Wow. What's a couple of cow folks doing with all this money? I don't have any idea, but we're sure gonna find out. Come on. Yeah, those outlaws always seem to know what the coaches are carrying. That would mean they have spies at both ends of the line. They have spies every place. Before the vigilantes could pick any of them up, they've been warned, and we have a cold trail. Oh, hello, Mrs. Manning. Come in. You're leaving town? Well, there's nothing for me here anymore. Could I talk to you alone, Captain? Oh, it's all right. Uh, these are railroad detectives. Come on in. Miss Adams, Mr. Clark. How do you do, ma'am? Please sit down. I should have come to you before, Captain, but I was too ashamed. Now tonight I received this threatening note. Get out of town or you'll end up the same as your husband. Have any idea who sent you this? I'm sure I do. And I'll tell you all I know because I'm leaving anyway and I won't have to be afraid anymore. The day before my husband was to be hanged, I went to Sheriff Plummer to plead for his life. The sheriff promised me that he would spare my husband's life if I would sign a certain paper. If I would sign a deed, turning over all my rights and interests to the mine that my husband and I had developed. Well, I didn't know what it was at the time. I, I didn't even know right from wrong. He appeared to be my friend, and I was willing to do anything. That night, he, he came to my house. You were alone? <laughs> Miss Manning, you've helped us more than you'll ever know. Thank you very much. Need anything more? Not much. A few confessions, maybe. Do you want to go with me to the sheriff's office, Matt? I wouldn't miss it, Captain. But we don't want to go in there half cocked. When we get plumber, let's get him good. Come on, Frankie. How long are you going to leave us in here? As long as those detectives are hanging around. Listen, plumber, we've been here long enough. You're gonna let us out right now. We're not taking any chances of a mob breaking in and lynching us. I'll let you out when I'm ready. All right, but if a mob does break in, you'll hang with us.
All right. Come on, quick. Hey, it's that detective. I'll get out the back door, fast. Slugged me when they tried to make a break. Well, Captain, there goes our only chance of finding out who the rest of the gang is. Oh, well, maybe not, Matt. Sheriff, when the stagecoaches go through town, they have code marks on them. Will you send one of your deputies over to the depot and pick up anyone marking them? Oh, sure can, Captain. I've bungled things long enough around here. I'd like to make up. Matt, as long as you and I feel that there are spies at both ends of the stage line, why don't you and I go out tomorrow morning and check all the relay stations, huh? Good idea. Pick me up at 6 o'clock and I'll ride out there with you. Right now, I'll go get my deputies together. Matt, if we're guessing right, he won't wait till morning. Neither will we. We ride now. Take this note to Red Jaeger at the relay station and give it all you've got, man. It's important. I'll make it fast. We had been riding all night. We're nearing the relay station. for you. Are you alone? Yeah. What's the trouble? Check on that and get the horses out of sight. A knot in your tie. What's it mean? Nothing. I've been wearing it like this for a long time. Have you noticed any chalk marks on stages coming in lately? Chalk marks? No. You're under arrest. What for? Wearing that sailor's knot in your tie. <sighs> like this? Suppose you don't like the way I part my hair, either. Matt, there's a horseman coming down the road. Hey, Red. I'd have been here sooner when my horse went lame. What's the matter, you sick? I've got some new orders. I'll take that. Get over there. Get out of town, the vigilantes are closing in. This note's unsigned. You're one of Plummer's deputies, aren't you? So what? He's the only man that knew we were coming out here. Plummer. The sheriff won't be around much longer, boys, if you care to talk. Let's turn him over to the vigilantes. No, no, wait a minute, give us a break. I'll talk, what do you want to know? That's what I want to know about. Plummer was next on our list, but it was too early in the morning for such an important man to be in his office. Well, good morning, good morning. Come on in. All set to ride? Let me get my coat here. For your information, Plummer, you've had your ride. We just got back from the relay station. You're under arrest. I don't believe I understand you. I represent the law here. I'll have you and your whole mob of vigilantes put behind bars. Red Jagger gave us the list of the whole gang. The vigilantes are waiting for you, plumber. Come on. Vigilantes, no. No, no please, they'll, they'll hang me. No, give me a chance. I'll, I'll go away and never come back. I'll, I'll do anything you say. Just give me a chance to square myself. You'll get a chance, plumber. The circuit judges do here day after tomorrow. You'll get plenty of chance. Like all dictators who have tried to manhandle the world, 
Henry Plummer ended up begging for mercy. His visions of an empire stopped forever by the sudden jerk of the hangman's noose. In eight short months, Plummer's criminal organization, hiding behind the shadow of a star, had murdered 103 innocent people. Between December the 10th, 1863, and February the 10th, 1864, the Plummer gang paid their score. An organized robbery and murder on the road ceased.